Hi, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. I uh, didn't get a video out to you guys last weekend. Sorry about that. It was just one of those weekends when stuff happened or didn't happen, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but uh, yeah, back with you this weekend with a couple of album reviews for you. And uh, these two albums actually have something in common. They are both by artists who started out big in the 80s. And the first one I'll be uh, talking about is the sixth album by Boy George and Culture Club entitled Life. Now, this is the first Culture Club album since 1986, uh, if you don't count an album that they put out in 1999, which was only released in Europe and Japan. Uh, oh, but Boy George, on the other hand, has pretty much uh, never stopped recording with relative regularity ever since Culture Club started out, uh, his biggest gap being eight years during the 2000s. But this actually is the first Boy George and or Culture Club album that I've listened to since Waking Up With House on Fire in 1984. Uh, now, I saw it on the uh, upcoming releases list uh, about a month ago, but uh, wasn't particularly keen on it uh, until I just, on a whim, decided to listen to the singles on YouTube uh, a few weeks ago, and I enjoyed them, so I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Now, with this album, uh, throws back to classic 80s culture club with uh, a reggae sound in several of the tracks. Reggae was one of their, their staple genres back in their heyday. The uplifting first single, Let Somebody Love You, that has a, a strong reggae vibe to it, uh, as does the ballad, What Does Sorry Mean? Uh, they also have uh, some calypso in one or two of the songs, particularly the song Human Zoo. And it also has several songs that are in the soul vein, uh, like Runaway Train and Different Man. Now, some of the strongest moments on this album actually come from the ballads, which was a little bit surprising to me. Uh, Oil and Water is one of the best ballads on the album. That's a standout track. Uh, the closing track, Life, is another great ballad on here. And the song before that, uh, a power ballad called More Than Silence, that's another standout track. I, I, I haven't quite picked out a favorite track on the album yet, but uh, More Than Silence is definitely in the running. Uh, the, as far as the lyrics go, they range from, you know, love and relationships and that kind of stuff to some of the bigger existential stuff like, uh, you know, life and, and God. Uh, the first track of the album is called God and Love. There have been lyrically stronger albums, not just in general, but also uh, in with Boy George and, and Culture Club in particular. Uh, but there have also been plenty of lyrically weaker albums, so uh, the lyrics are good, not great. Now, one of the things uh, worth noting on this album is Boy George's voice. Now, it's, it has uh, aged and deepened since the 80s, which, which can only be a good thing. I mean, it would be silly for him at, what is he, 57 years old now, to still be singing in that uh, higher register that he did back in the 80s. So, yeah, that's only a good thing. And one of the funny things about that is, on the third or fourth listen to this album, when I uh, was listening to this track, What Does Sorry Mean? That was one of the ballads that I mentioned a few minutes ago. It's, it's actually a song about domestic abuse, which makes it one of the lyrically heavier songs on the album. It finally occurred to me on the third or fourth listen, as I said, to uh, who he sounds like uh, vocally, and that is, of all people, Men at Work frontman Colin Hay. Now he has, uh, like Colin Hay does now, he has a bit of a, a bit more of a, uh, I like to think of it as a rustiness to his voice, you know, a bit, bit more of a husky, um, raspy tone to it than he did back a uh, bit way back when. I don't know if it's because of that, if I'm, you know, definitely hearing that, or if it's, it, it's probably partly has to do with the fact that, like Colin Hay, Boy George is the front man of an 80s group. So, uh, but yeah, that, uh, I mean, in my opinion, his resemblance to Colin Hay vocally just adds to his renewed appeal to me. Uh, so yeah, even though his voice is different now, uh, it's, it's still every bit as good as it was back in Culture Club's heyday, just in a different way. Now, to go alongside all the good things I've said about this album, it's not without its drawbacks. Uh, first of all, there's a lack of a well-defined sonic aesthetic, and that's something that kind of bugged me, and it was something that I couldn't put my finger on it that bugged me throughout the first two or three listens to this album. Uh, it uses just little bits and pieces of stuff from, you know, the various, the last few decades, like uh, you got a late 90s drum loop here, a uh, sampled guitar line from the early 2000s or so uh, in this other song. Uh, there's a little touches of maybe New Jack Swing type sounding stuff from the early 90s. And then on another, another track, you've got some rather ordinary or plain sounding keyboards from the 80s. So uh, yeah, if they, if they were going for some kind of a throwback sound, 
honestly, they really should have concentrated on one particular time frame, like, you know, a, a early 90s soul sound to the record, or, you know, late 80s R&B, or, or whatever. Because as it is, you know, with all those little bits and pieces, it, it sounds a little bit scattershot. So that's that was one of the things that kind of bugged me about the album. And uh, one more thing is that the album is plagued by the occasional awkward lyric. Like, for instance, in Human Zoo, uh, there's the line, Look around the human zoo, there's somebody there for you. So it's like, if this is a song about, you know, getting back into the dating scene, does he really want to compare humans to animals? I mean, so that's kind of the, the message I get from the lyrics. And and there's also the uh, the song Resting Bitch Face. It's certainly in the running for the weirdest titled song of the year. I don't know, but uh, anyway. So, uh, but yeah, it's a good album, not a great album. It uh, I don't see it in my top 10 of the year, maybe not even in my top 15, but uh, honestly, I'm not sorry I picked it up. It's, it's, it's always fun for me revisiting a, a classic group from the 80s that I, that I enjoyed back in the day. So yeah, Boy George and Culture Club, life, um, give it a listen. What the heck? Okay, the other album I'll be looking at today is Rocket, the fifth release by Edie Brickell and New Bohemians. Now, not unlike Boy George and Culture Club, uh, this is the first New Bohemians album in 12 years, but Edie Brickell has been recording consistently with and without the New Bohemians since their debut album in 1998, Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars, which yielded their biggest hit, What I Am. Now, I uh, have never been a particular big, particularly big fan of theirs, but uh, I did inherit their Ultimate Collection CD from my sister and have enjoyed it. Edie Brickell's biggest solo song, incidentally, was Good Times from, I believe, her 1994 solo album. Now, this album, to be honest, was not on my radar at all, but uh, I happened to see it while I was strolling the aisles at the local store. I had a $50 trade credit uh, to spend, so uh, when I saw the cover, which, and I think I've told you guys before that uh, sometimes when I see the cover of an album, I just get a feeling that I'm going to like it. I decided to YouTube the uh, singles that were out there and really enjoyed them, and I decided to go for it. Uh, another thing that helps is, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, this album is on the Verve Forecast label. So I just seem to have good luck with albums that are on that label. So, uh, but yeah, my, my gamble paid off, and I really enjoy this album. The first single, What Makes You Happy, it has the same kind of a summery, feel-good vibe that uh, Sheryl Crow's song, All I Want to Do, has. Uh, and in, it's in part because of the way that she half sings and half speaks the lyrics. Now, I don't often like that kind of thing, but uh, but I gotta say, Edie Brickell does it well. Uh, and another Cheryl, Cheryl Crowish moment, if you will, on the album uh, comes along rather uh, later on in the song Tell Me. So yes, it's got another another Cheryl Crowish vibe to it. Um, track two, Superhero. In that track, her voice, oddly enough, reminds me of Macy Gray. It's got kind of that that soul R and B ish, uh, again huskiness, kind of like uh, kind of like Boy George, but uh, in a different way. Uh, uh, but also has to do with the way that she delivers the lyrics in a way. And again, it's kind of the half sing, half speak thing, but it's a little bit more on the singing side. It's, but it's it's just the the same delivery that Macy Gray would do back in her heyday. I mean, you listen to Macy Gray, uh, you'll hear the commonalities. At least I did. But yeah, as I said, her her voice has developed a bit of a huskiness over the years, which it just seems to suit her style really well. And now this album has a lot of different uh, song stylings on it. Uh, it's got a, a vintage soul vibe, uh, kind of reminds me of Bill Withers uh, on the song I Don't Need a Man. Uh, the song Singing in the Shower has, it, it's a full-on reggae tune. Uh, the song Exaggerate is an indie rock tune, which kind of harkens back to classic New Bohemians. But then it's got like this 60s psychedelic interlude right in the middle of it, which which kind of changes it up. It's, it's great. The song Eyes in the Window has a 70s hard rock sound to it. Uh, reminds me of The Who. And then there's the song Green Magic, which has a kind of a funk rock sound that remind, reminds me of the Red Hot Chili Peppers a bit. So yeah, there's the sounds are just all over the map on this album. There are a couple of really nice uh, singer-songwriter style ballads, like uh, Drawn to You and Colors. Those are very nice. Uh, there's a bit of a smoky blue sound on the song Obvious. That's kind of a standout. It's just got this this kind of a, a deep, quiet blues sound to it. And uh, probably my favorite song on this album, and it was kind of hard to pick out a favorite, but my favorite has got to be Trust. And that has uh, that has some jazz elements to it. So 
So yeah, I mean, the song, the sounds are just all over the map on this album. So if you are looking for an album that has a unifying sound or a theme to it, you might be disappointed. And yes, it kind of, it probably sounds like I'm contradicting myself with, with what I just said a few minutes ago about the Boy George and Culture Club album. But uh, no, I'm not. The difference is with Edie Brickell and New Bohemians, they really throw themselves into each track's specific sound. Uh, you know, the sounds might vary from song to song, but they definitely, they, they just give it all to each song, which which I th which I consider a strength. So yeah, I mean, this album is a bit jukeboxy. You know, it, it kind of you know jumps around all over the place, so that might not be everybody's cup of tea. And also uh, the lyrics, um, it leans a little bit light on the lyrical subject matter, you know, not not so much heavy stuff in here. So, you know, that might not be, you know, if you're into more substantial lyrics, that might be a drawback to you. But personally, I just love this album and I am really glad I picked it up. Is is it going to end up in my top 10? It's a distinct possibility, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I uh, delved a little bit deeper or decided to revisit Edie Brickell and New Bohemians, uh, the song, the album Rocket. Excellent album. I really, really enjoyed this one. So, uh, yeah, a couple of uh, good picks there. Uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Have you listened to either of these albums? Let me know your thoughts on them, uh, if you have. Uh, let me know in the comments. And also, uh, please subscribe to my video, to my channel, if you haven't yet. I would very much appreciate having you as a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching. Again, uh, hope to see you again soon. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.